want to do a face tracking pan and tilt system with Ross and you don't know where to start, don't panic. Morpheus Chair is here to help you. So buckle up and let's go. Welcome to Morpheus Chair, the program where you learn to build robots from your comfy chairs. So in this video, we are going to continue with what we did in previous video, which was creating a simulation uh, in Ross Development Studio for Gazebo uh, for the pan and tilt. This way we could test things very fast without having to deal with the nonsense of real physics and reality. So in this video, what you're going to learn is how to do a face tracking system using ROS and all the systems that we generated in the previous video. So without further ado, to the workbench, to the workbench, to the workbench. So here we are. So remember that we have the Git where all the code that we're going to generate in this video will be uploaded and you can download it for free and play around in your, lo in your local computer or in Rust Development Studio. Yeah, I leave in the description below also the Rust Jack with everything. So the Rust Jack is basically this, which is pan and tilt simulation that has the latest code uploaded. We just launch it. Here we are. So we say no. We, the first thing we are going to open is a shell and the IDE to see the code and explain just a bit how I've done it. Okay, so as we saw in the previous video, we had these three gits that we've downloaded from the, the construct um, gits, public gits. So here what we have is some new stuff, but basically the ICOG face tracker, this is a git that it wasn't created by me and I've just modified it and, and adapted some stuff that shouldn't, that made it work a bit worse or some bugs that I'll show you right now, which is because it's really interesting to know uh, this kind of stuff. So. One of the problems that we had in the ICOG face tracker is the fact that it didn't have these dependencies. And these dependencies, what they generated, if, if you don't put them, is that these messages that had to be used in the face tracker, basically these ones, the, the Facebook and the faces, weren't found when compiling, okay? Because it's supposed that they were already in the system. If you don't put this, these add dependencies, especially these add dependencies, the iCog face tracker generate messages, this will allow it to generate first the messages and then compile the, the binaries, okay? This is a a key point to make this work. That's why I added this git as a version inside the pen until so you don't have to do this. Okay, just comment you on this. Okay, so what are the new things that we've added? Well, I've, I've added these ICOG face tracker, which is the one that basically makes the tracking work. And then I modified some, some stuff in the description because I saw that the model didn't work as well as it should. So, for example, in the face, I changed some stuff in the joints. That way, this yaw joint has its own joint yaw max effort and speed. And for the pitch, the same thing which these are declared inside here. The reason I did this is that because of the mechanics of the system, 
it seems that the pitch doesn't work the same way and therefore I had to limit the speed so if you go here you see that the speed in the pitch is 0.1 while in the yaw it's 1.0 so this way the the pan and tilt doesn't go crazy yeah, and behaves more realistically yeah apart from these details let's go to the, the core which is how to launch everything so we had this main and I generated this main simulation which we had until here so I've added uh, the this start pan until server that we did in the previous video so that it launches automatically when we launch the simulation and then I've added this which spawns a person that you can move around and also we spawn the tracker sim which is the it's defined in the icog face tracker yeah so we're going to talk about that but basically this is the one that makes everything work and then when you go to if we go to icog face tracker basically we're launching this tracker cpp which what it does is load this hard cascade frontal face XML that allows us to detect faces and this is then published in a topic called faces and from there we extract all the data yeah okay so how do we extract the data and how do we move the pan and tilt that's the thing because basically this is an, a node that gets the information of the camera and just publishes face detections and what we have to do is convert that data into something that makes the robot move so we have here in scripts I've added this face tracker which essentially does everything so the first thing is that let's go here and what we do is we initialize this face tracker um, class and then we execute this function which is called face follow and then we just spin it so the spin is not necessary here but I just left it there so this face tracker does the following. First, we use the pan and tilt client that we did in previous video to be able to move the... Um, it doesn't matter if it's the simulated version or the real one. This algorithm, this script will work exactly the same. That's the power of ROS. Then we subscribe to this faces. So we check that it works. This check what what it does is that it waits for the message for this faces detection topic, which is faces, the one that it's published by the ICOG face tracker. And it waits and stays in this while loop until we shut down or the faces message is none. So it gets something. That way we are sure that we have data to work with. Once we have it, then we initialize the subscriber to this topic and we initialize this callback. Yeah. So this callback, the only thing that it does is save the data inside this self faces message. And that is the variable that we access in all the functions to get the data. Yeah. So once we have that, the method face follow that it's the one that it's executed here face follow it's the one that does all the job all the work basically so what we do is first thing is we put the, um, the pan and tilt to zero zero angle pan and tilt and once we are there then we set an increment that we will this is the var variation of the angles that we will do based on the, the detection of the face. Yeah. So uh, then it's the sign. This is really important because this defines how 
this increment or this variations of the, the position of the face affects the, the pan and tilt angles because uh, a detection of the face in let's say a delta um, for example here delta basically is the difference between where the, the center of the face is and the center of the image and that delta, that difference, is what we use to make those increments and know if we have to increment the pan and or decrement the pan and the same thing for the page. So these are basically uh, empirical. So I just saw what I had to do if I had a positive width, if I had to increment or decrement the pan. It's essentially that. So here we increment with the increment that we did, which we place here, which is one degree. And then we assign this differences in signs. And that's quite it. So we then move the pan and tilt to these uh, positions. And that's it. It's not very complex and it could be better done but this is like the most basic way of doing a face tracking and it works so let's see how it works so we just have to launch the simulation we go to main simulation so we go to simulations source bash rosback profile okay now ros launch uh, I think it was, uh, which was it, uh, pen tilt control, pen tilt control, let me have a look here, so it's start face tracker, which basically launches the python, so start face tracker, yeah, so we have to have a look in the graphical tools, which in theory, yeah. So this simulation launches as I, I show you everything. One of them is the ICOC uh, face tracker. So as you can see here, it's tracking the face. And if we go to the other terminal that we have opened and we do a ROS, so we go to simulations first. And then a ROS back profile, and then we do a ROS topic list grep face. We see that we have faces, so if we do ROS topic echo faces, it's getting data from the faces. So in this case, it's only one, but it's it works with two, three faces in the screen, no problem. So um, we are now going to launch the face tracker. So the one that reads the, this data basically and moves the pan and tilt of the simulation that we have here in a way that tries to center the image of the face. Yeah, so we should have the face around here. Yeah, so let's launch it see what happens there we go so as you can see it's trying to center the face and there you go so now it's looking in the eye to that person and you say okay that's very easy you know what it is okay so now what we're going to do is move the person and that's where the person sim uh, package comes in handy because we just have to ROS launch uh, person sim uh, sorry sim move person standing there we go so now we can move the, that person let's put this more or less here oops this here here okay so now 
I'm going to move the person. There we go. Move it there. Then we move the face there. And then you can see that the face moves and centers. Oh, oops, sorry. And looks again into the eye to the person. We can move it again. Let me have a reference. There we go. So now I let's move it with a keyboard. Oh, there we go. Uh, let's move it. So you can see that it only tracks and detects a person when it's complete the face. That's one thing. And the other one is Go there we go. Whoop. It detect the face there. Okay, so it's moving, 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 moving. And there we go. So it's tracking the face. And that's it. So now you know how to do a face tracking in a pan and tilt in simulation. Next video we'll apply the same algorithm, the same methods, the same scripts but in the real robot. So we'll have to adapt some stuff, but that's it. And that's all for today. Please leave a like if you liked the video and considered that it was useful and subscribe because it helps a lot to know that you people love and like the content that we do. And in the next video, what we are going to do is apply all the algorithms that we've generated for the simulation, we are now going to use them in the real pen and tilt. So don't miss the next video. And, and remember that we have the ROS Developer Conference in June. So I've left a link if you want to get tickets for seeing it. Really great and super interesting conferences about it, all practical. Simulation, not that rubbish of talking, talking, talking and nothing practical. So I really highly recommend you. And that's it. So until then, keep building, keep building.